Good greetings, everyone. My name is Dr. Mushai Gashago. I am a consultant ophthalmologist and retina surgeon at City Eye Hospital. And I'm happy to be talking about optical coherence tomography, or OCT, in the diagnosis of Stargardt's disease. So we shall look at it in, through this basic outline where we look at the definition and clinical presentations of Stargardt's disease. We shall look at a few cases and the diagnostics and then zero in on why OCT is appropriate in the diagnosis of Stargardt's disease. So Stargardt's disease is an inherited juvenile macular degeneration. It's an autosomal recessive disease and mainly affecting the ABCA4 gene in 95% of cases. There are a few other genes that are involved, but the ABCA4 gene is the most commonly affected. So the cascade is essentially a mutation in the ABCA4 gene that results in an accumulation of all transretinal, eventually leading to an accumulation of lipofuscin within the retina. And this is toxic to the retinal photoreceptor cells and to the retinal pigment epithelium and causes destruction at that level. So that is the cascade in summary. So the symptoms of this destruction of photoreceptors and retinal pigment epithelial cells results in altered central vision, mostly reported as either blurry or distorted, or patients report scotomas. There's reduced visual acuity on assessment, and patients also often report a difficulty in appreciating various colors because of macular involvement. Now, in the diagnosis of Stargardt's disease, you start with your examination, which is either in the form of a dilated fundus examination or a fundus photo. And there are characteristic findings that you shall see, and we shall see these as you go along the case. And mainly you'll find the maculopathy bit of it, which is typically defined as a copper beaten appearance, as you can see in these photos, um, affecting copper beaten appearance of the macula. And in some cases, you have what is referred to as fundus flavimaculatus, where you have pale specks or flecks along the peripheral retina. Diagnostic tools used include fluorescein and geography, which gives you this typical dark choroid appearance, or fundus autofluorescence, which gives you areas of hypofluorescence, hypoautofluorescence, sorry, um, in the areas of RPE atrophy and hyper autofluorescence in areas of lipofuscin deposition. Now, when it comes to the OCT, we'll zero in on the OCT because OCTs are now widely available in Kenya. It is affordable, it is accessible, and there are characteristic findings that you shall find on OCT that can help you in making this diagnosis. So we shall look at a few cases. The first case is SN, a 40-year-old female, who was referred with complaints of difficulty reading. Her visual acuity was 660 in the right eye and 636 in the left eye, not improving with a pinhole, and IOP of 24 and 18. We looked at the fundus examination, and you can see there on my very excellent fundus drawing, the copper beaten appearance. And when you look at the OCT, you find this foveal thinning with the loss of outer retinal layers in both eyes, and you can see it is quite symmetrical. And in this case, you also have damage to some of the inner retinal layers with generalized thinning of the fovea and some thinning of the RPE, especially in the left eye. The second case is CM, a 21-year-old female who complained of reduced vision for the past seven years. Her visual acuity was 660 in the right eye and in the left eye, intraocular pressure was 12 and 10. This case was slightly worse. And as you can see here on the fundus photo, you can see that typical bronze, beaten bronze appearance with the RPE atrophy. And then you can see a few areas of hypopigmentation in the periphery in both eyes. And when you look at the macula, you see severe foveal thinning. And you see that almost all the retinal layers are affected there, both the outer and the inner retinal layers. It almost looks like a macular hole because of the severe foveal atrophy that you see there. And so you can see in more severe cases, the contour of the macula is totally lost with flattening almost because of damage to the outer and inner retinal layers. Case three, we have MN, a 67-year-old female who presented with poor vision since childhood. And to this point in time, no diagnosis of Stargardt had ever been made. Her visual acuity was 660 in the right eye, 360 in the left eye, not in, uh, right eye only improving to 636, left eye not improving at all. Intraocular pressure was 14 and 13. 
When you look at the fundus photo, the right eye, you see once again that typical appearance of the macula with severe uh, ret RPE atrophy uh, in both eyes. Left eye, you can see is poorly centered because of the very poor fixation in that eye. And when you look at the OCT, once again, you see here severe destruction of the retina, almost forming a lamella macular hole, complete loss of the outer retinal layers. And here you see even damage to the RPE and going into the inner layers of the choroid. You see on the left eye here, you have severe foveal thinning, severe RPE thinning, and this is a more advanced case of Stargardt's disease. So in summary, you see the OCT findings of Stargardt's disease are quite characteristic. And as you can see in the cases that have presented, as it gets worse, you have more and more disruption of the retina, both inner and outer uh, segments of the photoreceptors. And in more advanced cases, you have thinning of other retinal layers. And you could see in the very third case where you have worse destruction over many years, thinning and destruction, even of the retinal pigment epithelium and into outer layers of the choroid, inner layers of the choroid, sorry. So when it comes to the management of these patients, of course, you shall do refraction to get the best possible vision, but of course, low vision assessment and a low vision device will be helpful as this is macular disease and magnification will be necessary for the patient to have better visual functioning. Sun protection has also been seen to be useful uh, because excess sun exposure has been known to increase all transretinol in the retina, uh, resulting in higher levels of lipofuscin and more damage. Smoking has been noted to cause progression of Stargardt's disease, and therefore we advise all patients to stop smoking. Gene therapy is currently under trial and so far looks quite promising with patients improving in their visual acuity um, in the cases that we have seen so far. So in summary, we have Stargardt's being a relatively common maculopathy, um, diagnosed clinically, but there are diagnostic tools such as OCT that are available, and this will aid in confirming your diagnosis. And this is useful because then you have appropriate referral, appropriate management, and appropriate prognostication so that the patient knows what to expect of their condition in terms of its progression, and what to expect in terms of visual loss over years um, as you follow the patient up. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, that's my presentation.